We're going to get a little bit off the beaten path, slightly off the beaten path. It's not too far off, actually. We talk about the media a lot on this program, although I don't normally begin with it. But, you know, as a former TV news director, uh, a former TV news director will talk about the media. So we do that on occasion. Now, one of the things you may or may not know is that uh, in the past several years, especially under the Obama administration, the media have been under attack as never before in terms of subpoenas, in terms of all kinds of attacks on the free press. And you know it happens nationally, because every now and then it'll happen to national reporters or a ser- series of national reporters like it did to the Associated Press uh, last year, and it got reported on. What you don't know is that it happens locally as well. And that brings me to David Morgan. David is a publisher over in Cochise County. He does a thing called the Cochise County Record. He's done many, many things in his life, but among them is journalist. If he had lived 2,000 years ago, the ancient Greeks probably would have called him a gadfly. He's the kind of guy that files a lot of public serv- uh, public records requests. He wants to know what's going on with government, and he's very aggressive about it. I got to know David when I was a news director over at K-Gun because he does this kind of thing. Sometimes he makes he breaks some stories that way. Now, the other day, David got a really interesting email from Google letting him know that the Cochise County Attorney's Office was after his emails. And Google didn't even say whether they were going to turn them over or not. So this is something no journalist likes to hear. What? My emails have been subpoenaed? Yes, they have. So I have uh, Mr. Morgan on the phone right now. He's, he's uh, agreed to join us. And uh, so my first question to you, David, is what the hell are they doing? Do you, have, do you know yet what they're looking for and why? No, sir, I don't. Um, the uh, subpoena deuces tecum, which is a request for production of documents, simply says that it's related to an ongoing criminal investigation. And then it asks Google to produce all emails since October 6, uh, 2014, through whatever date they produce them, that is, through today, if they haven't produced them yet. Right. Um, and it's all emails, uh, including content, is what they're asking for, uh, to my email address or from my email address. Now, the uh, I have a copy of the uh, the subpoena, which is is partially redacted, so it doesn't. Uh, my copy doesn't say what email addresses that they're looking for. Are these all yours, David? Are the all these email addresses that are on this subpoena your email addresses, or are they looking uh, to have a, a, a correspondence between you and some other individual? Uh, almost certainly between me and one other individual, a man named Craig Smith, who's a friend of mine, uh, and who was, until a few weeks ago, the four, foreman, foreperson, of the current uh, local county grand jury. So are they looking for all emails just between the two of you, or is the dragnet larger? Are they looking for, like, all the emails that you've sent or received over the period that's in question? Well, that's the crazy thing. I suspect on multiple levels the, the subpoena is poorly drafted because uh, if you read it carefully, it says all emails, uh, not between those two addresses, but all me- emails to or from uh, my address is the one you can read. And then Craig Smith got an identical one where my email address is black, uh, redacted, blanked out. Uh, but his is on there. So anybody that he or I communicated about anything, uh, you know, personal, anything, they're asking Google to produce that. Yep. It says you are hereby requested pursuant to, and then it names the Arizona, uh, the, the particular Arizona law to provide the quality. First, they want to know who is it that these two email accounts belong to, and the first one is redacted, but yours is not. And then it's on my copy. And then it says uh, all emails between the above accounts from October 6, 2014, to the date of the response, blah, 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 including but not limited to messages sent from phones. Uh, photos and texts, forwarded emails from other accounts, archived messages, deleted messages, and so on and so forth uh, for these two accounts. And then it also goes, it has the additional step of saying, and don't tell these guys that we want to, that we want this. Of course, Google does, and uh, they're not legally, and it does say in the subpoena that they're not legally required not to let you know, but Google typically does let their their clients know if their emails have been subpoenaed, and so they... They did let you know. But you, have you been able to find out uh, from Google yet, David, whether or not they plan to actually cough this information up, or are they going to fight this? Um, I don't know. Um, I can't find a, a, a person to talk to. Of course, I've sent them numerous emails, and with the exception of the initial notification, and then a follow-up uh, after I requested a copy of the document, they did provide that. 
That is, it did not come, the subpoena did not come with you as a copy of or attachment to the original notification. So other than those two pieces of correspondence, I don't have any other correspondence from uh, Google at all. Now, that, that's got to be sort of a, a wake-up call when you find out. A lot of people don't realize this, and I think most of us journalists probably do. But I would, get, I would venture to guess that most people that are on uh, their phones and are on the Internet and are using Google or whatever email service that they're using, they probably don't realize that if somebody decides to subpoena those records, not only can they do that, but you may not even find out that they have done that, depending on your email provider. So was this a shock to you to suddenly find out from Google that your emails are being looked at, or, or at least that the county attorney, the assistant county attorney, wants to look at your emails? Did that, did that, did that surprise and shock you? What was your reaction? Well, well yeah, it surprised me. I'm, I'm not sure I'd go so far as to say shock. Uh, um, and note that the, the county attorney signs the, it's actually our county attorney designate, uh, Brian McIntyre was appointed to fulfill the term of our county attorney, Ed Reinheimer, who resigned right. uh, uh, effective the end of this year, a midterm, a mid his four-year term. And um, it was interesting, it was signed on October uh, 13, I believe. Um, That's and correct. as it turns out, uh, it, it, typically... Um, the uh, subpoena is is requested from an investigating agency, and that in this case is the sheriff's department. Uh, that is, the, our county attorney here does not have any investigators, uh, so they depend upon sheriff's departments and local PDs. And right, I guess, I guess that's about it. For you know, so somebody at the sheriff's department initiated almost certainly. I don't have I don't have this factually because I can't get copies of any supporting documents. Uh, Usually uh, you ask a judge to, to sign a, a search warrant or an arrest warrant or you ask for a subpoena. Well, you have to convince somebody that, that you need it. Right. Uh, and, and, and so I expected that I could find a, 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 a statement like a probable cause or why I need this. You know? and, and the county attorney's office, civil division, told me that, that no such document pursuant to my request exists. Wow. Now, David, I've been, as a news director, I've been subpoenaed many, many times over news stories. Mm -hmm. And normally it wasn't for my emails or anything like that. Normally they're looking for reporters' notes and things like that, which we'd never give them. But I don't recall ever having received a subpoena that had not been authorized by a judge. Now, my memory may be spotty, and I am not a lawyer, but there's no judge's signature on this. So is this even a valid subpoena? Well, I don't know about the signature part. Uh, that is, uh, I suspect that the county attorney's office does have authority to sign uh, subpoenas. However, the uh, section of Arizona law that uh, the county attorney relies on and, and mentions in that subpoena, um, actually, it's not very complicated to read. And the very last sentence in the law says, communications records do not include content. So, if you can imagine, like your phone bill, it says uh, a call started was made on this date uh, at this time uh, to this number and lasted uh, forty-five seconds. Right. That's a, that's a record of a communication, like the NSA has been getting from all of us. And, and Arizona law provides that they could request that from the the carrier. Arizona law, or at least the law he he cited, does not uh, permit uh, the or require the carrier. Uh, to provide the content of those um, uh, communications. Right, and, that particular yet, statute. Hmm, interesting. You know, but, but the subpoena looks pretty, uh, you know, if the Google lawyers aren't careful and aren't up on Arizona law, they might divulge a bunch of stuff that they didn't need to. Well, they, it, it, it's really interesting, and we don't yet know what they're going to do. I contacted Google this morning. I also contacted the county attorney's office. Google got back to me and told me that they'd get back to me. The county attorney's office, I haven't heard from them. So we don't really know what's going on here, what they're doing, or what, whether Google will uh, comply or not. Uh, but it just, you know, my interest in this case is because, number one, I mean, I've seen your stuff for many years. I know that you were very aggressive in investigating folks in Cochise County, and I would imagine you've tweaked a lot of noses there. Do you think this is paybacks for something you've done? Well, uh, the payback uh, I can deal with. I think this is worse. I think this is a clear attempt not to intimidate me. Um, but to intimidate anybody from talking to me. Huh. 
Can you imagine? I mean, if you know that your email could be read or your phone conversation might be recorded or whatever, um, it, it would have a chilling effect on your uh, interest in in communicating with me. Yeah, I guess it would. And I, and I can tell you I've already had people, including lawyers, um, tell me that they don't want to communicate with me by those methods anymore. And I have found out, just as a practicing journalist, even at a television station, that it's surprisingly easy to intimidate and to harass and to cause all kinds of trouble for local journalists. People that, you know, at the national level, they don't put up with that. They bring in big gun lawyers, they file all kinds of motions, and the national journalists have ways of protecting themselves, although we, as we've seen under the Obama administration, it's getting harder and harder and harder for even them to do that. AP had its entire Washington staff. Uh, their records were subpoenaed, and they didn't find out about it until after the records had been turned over. But uh, at the local level, it's 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 easy. And I have found over the past few years that officials seem to be more willing to do that and also less willing uh, to actually comply with public records requests, because Arizona in particular, our law doesn't really have any teeth that to speak of. So, um, And I know you in particular have, have cut a swath in Cochise County. I mean, you, you file a lot of public records requests, and you were on these guys' Uh, butts all the time. So, uh, so do you? Um, is this going to? Do you think this will have a, uh, an immediate effect on the kinds of things that you try to do over there? I mean, are you? You've already told me some of your lawyer friends are saying, "Man, <laughs> I'm not sure it's safe to talk to you anymore." Where do you? Th- well, what do you? Let me ask you this: What do you plan to do about all this, if anything? I mean, is there well, anything you can actually, do? I, it's not going to affect me personally so much. Um, I don't have uh, uh, anything to hide, even. But my ability to communicate with people could get restricted. But keep in mind that this is particularly interesting, at least in my thinking, because the other party, Craig Smith, was the head of the local county grand jury. Now, you just made a statement for us that I have to take uh, exception to. Arizona public records laws are actually a, among the best in the nation. The problem is you can't get anybody to enforce them. It's, it's a class six felony for any uh, uh, government employee, public official, or anybody else to alter uh, a public document. Right. I, it's a criminal offense to alter a public document or to present it to you as if it were complete when it's not complete or to delay access to that document. So if the boss tells the clerk, hey, um, when Morgan comes in, just tell him you can't find that. That's a criminal act. Yeah. And if the two of them get together to do that, it's a conspiracy to do to uh, commit a criminal act. Right. Then but, that's a class two felony. Right. So, but enforcement would, is key. You what mentioned would that word. If the county grand jury decided to indict a bunch of local public officials for criminal violations of public records law. Well, in a lot of cases, I know when I was in, uh, investigating a case right there in Cochise County, the agency that I would rely on to help me with a case like that represented the very organization that I wanted the records from. So there was absolutely exactly. no possibility of enforcement. Also, that's why, the county, that's why the county grand jury is so important. County grand jury is not a, 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 a subsidiary of the county attorney, and it is not a subsidiary of the presiding judge. The county attorney, I mean, the county grand jury is a completely independent function. They can bring investigations just because something doesn't smell right. Uh, if they want to, they don't, they don't have to know of a specific criminal offense. They don't have to know of a specific possible. A defendant, if they just say, we think there's a, a problem with public records in Cochise County, we want to investigate it, then it will get investigated. Then they could. But if the county, uh, if the grand jury is not even aware that they have that power by law, then obviously they're not going to take those steps. Right. One of the reasons I think that, you know, I'm not a fan of, of Arizona's public records laws, and the reason is, for instance, when I was in the state of Florida, if I, pile, if I filed a public records request on an agency, and they did not respond within 24 hours, based on the law and based on case law, then they were in, in violation of the law. And I could go on the air and say so. In Arizona, you can't. I mean, basically, they can ignore you, and then the only thing you can really do is go sue them if you've got the ability to do that. And uh, in Arizona, that's an issue, because uh, unless you're in Phoenix, the rest of us, we probably don't have a legal budget. So it just becomes more and more difficult. Well, David, let me ask you this last question, uh, and then we got to wrap it up and take a break. But uh, what do you plan to do next is there anything that you can do in terms of contacting uh the kinds of agencies that that would you know defend journalists sometimes you can get somebody to defend you pro bono or look into your case pro bono although i found that was pretty hard for tv stations but what are your options now 
Um, well, I'm not certain. Certainly, I've tried to, uh, and I've had some communications with um, uh, uh, the various groups, ACLU and the Reporters Committee for Freedom of the Press, and the uh, the um, investigative and uh, I'm sorry, investigative reporters and editors, and all these groups. And and the problems, uh, uh, frankly, the problems are so big everywhere. It's so hard for them to get excited about rural Cochise County. Yeah, you know? that's exactly the and, kinds of problems that I was finding, too. They just don't yeah. get excited about the outlying areas. Phoenix, they'll get excited about. Tucson, yeah, probably not. Rural areas, definitely not. That's I found this. That's not, exactly sure. right. Yeah. But um, my plan is to try to leverage this somehow. Um, I teased with some friends of mine the other day that if I could ever get a hold of somebody at Google, I'd try to make them my partner. Yeah. <laughs> Well, David, I wish you luck. Please keep me updated. And remember, when you're sending me an email by Gmail, it could be subpoenaed. <laughs> so, That's correct. Sir. Good luck be to careful. you. And thanks for talking with us today. That's David Morgan. Good afternoon. Publisher in uh, Cochise County, under attack, or under investigation at least, for reasons he's not sure, although since his friend is a grand jury foreman, it's uh, probably a safe guess to believe that somebody in Cochise County thinks that there might have been some kind of improper conversation there. But David says he doesn't know exactly what it is. And now his emails are under subpoena. Just goes to show you, Big Brother's watching. We have to take a break.